bringing hope the world over. Hope Channel. Welcome to our series, How to Christianity, your guide to practical Christian living, making faith real and relevant to everyday life. Our topic for today, how to lead the next generation leaders. I'll be sharing with you five finger leadership essentials for the next generation leaders. Let me share this philosophy of mine. You know, I believe that every believer is a disciple. If you are a believer, you are a follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. And every believer, every disciple, I mean, is a minister. A minister is someone who shares his talents and his gifts in service of our Master and our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. Every minister is a leader. If you are a minister, you are a leader in the sense that you are influencing other people to do the same, to do li likewise. And I believe that if you are a leader, you are a disciple maker. Every leader is a disciple maker. As a youth pastor of Philippine International Church at the Adventist University of the Philippines, I am surrounded by, by next generation leaders, young students, young, young adults, young people who will be future leaders of the church, of our nation in the future. In one way or the other, you are a leader or will soon be a leader. In what way? You'll be a leader of your future family, perhaps a few, an organization, business, a church, group, a class. Now you are given that chance to attempt things that my generation only dreamed about. I am part of, a, of Generation X, all those born in the 70s. As a pastor and a leader, I have been given a big responsibility to pass on what I know about leadership to the generation coming along behind me. And I am happy to tell you, and I'm glad to, to tell you that the Bible has much to share with us when it comes to leadership. Every year, we elect a new set of officers for the Adventist Youth Ministry in that church. We elect our various student officers for the various student groups in the campus to pass on the leadership. You will all agree with me that if someone coming along behind you is not able to take what you have offered and build on it, then you have failed in your responsibility to the next generation. Let me invite you to pray. Father God in heaven, I believe that you have put us on earth for a special purpose, for a special reason. Whatever that is, may we continue to discover that and realize how important our influence is around the people around us. And I pray that as we have this uh, short study, we may learn more about how we can become responsible leaders, especially passing on the lessons that we have learned to the next generation. Thank you so much for hearing and answering our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. On my way to a very important conference meeting at Malabon City, two weeks ago, I boarded the fully packed LRT, the light rail transit. It's a train. As the light rail transit sped, it, sped its way to Monumento, I held tightly on the handlebars. I was so thankful I have all five fingers on my right hand. Can you go check your right hand right now? Check if you have five fingers. Are you not thankful that you have five fingers? I hope you don't have more than five fingers as well. You know, I was watching the television one time and in a, in a, in a TV program, I think uh, a program related to the Guinness Book of Records, there, there's a man who actually has about 12 fingers, 12 fully functional fingers. Imagine that. But five fingers for me is enough. Now, I will be sharing with you only five important points on leadership. What lessons 
had this brief train ride taught me. Upon reaching Monumento, I was thankful. No, so thankful that I have all these five fingers. Five fingers that made the journey secure and stable. Imagine yourself standing inside the train without any uh, hands, any arm. It will be too difficult to, to stand and be stable and balance yourself. And it's just so nice to know that you have a hand to hold on to the rail. Let me share with you the five finger leadership points you need to develop and pass on to the next generation. Let me start with the thumb. Now, it's always easy to remember if we, if we use some device to recall some important principles and important points. And for this occasion, I want you to look at carefully at the fingers that you have. Let's start with the thumb, your thumb finger. Each time I look at my thumb, I am reminded of this important principle. As a leader, you need to have a courage, a courage to lead. Take out your right hand, bend your fingers toward your palm, do this way, do like this, and hold it there tightly as if you're ready to strike. Now, what do you notice? What holds all the five fingers together? Your thumb, right? Leaders need to be courageous. What are you most afraid about as a leader? That no one will follow you? That no one will support you? That your best efforts will turn to ashes? That no one will be blessed by your slightest efforts? You know, this text tells us much about how we will lead and how we should lead as leaders. The Bible tells us, do not fear. Do not fear. And what is the promise? The promise is, for I am with you. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. And surely I will uphold you with my righteous hand. With my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41 verse 10. You know, as a leader... We face so many responsibilities. We have so many concerns and we have so many burdens. And at times, we feel like quitting. As a leader, we feel like giving up. The fear is just too great for us to face. You see, the promise of the Lord is, do not fear for who is with you, our God. Do not be anxious. Do not be worried. And God will strengthen you and surely He will help you. Surely He will uphold you. And if you are in the palm of God's hand, you are safe, you are secure. God is with you. Do not fear. Are you afraid? Well, we all go through that experience. We are sometimes afraid. But the real question is, will you allow fear to blind you to mediocrity? You will never know the outcome unless you try. You now, leaders are not afraid to fail. Are you afraid to fail? You now, many times, the only way for us to grow is to try and fail. And we learn much, and we learn more, in fact, by failing. What's worse than failing is to have never tried at all. If you are a perfectionist, and if you want all things to be perfect in such a way that you would rather not try it because you are afraid to fail, you know what's worse than failing? It is to have never tried at all. Remember the story of David. He was a very insignificant lad. But because of his courage, he led Israel's army to victory. Don't let your fear get in the way. Don't let people measure your worth by your looks or family background. Your appointment is divine. God appointed you as a leader. Are you a father? God appointed you as a leader of your family. Are you a supervisor? God appointed you as a leader of that group. We are in a leader in one way or another. And you can't lead without taking risk. You won't take risk without courage. You need courage. And if you have that courage, you will be willing to take risk. 
Courage. Huh? Remember this. Courage is essential to leadership. You know, if fear of communication is uh, one of your fears, face your fears. I know of many successful Christians who could not speak well, but were courageous enough and are now more successful than those talented with it. Take risk. Be courageous enough. Be bold, for God is with you. Thumb, the courage to lead. Second one, another essential to leadership is a vision to guide. You know, the point finger <clears throat> represents our vision. You know, when we're trying to point someone to a direction, we use our, 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 our point finger, right? We don't use our little thumb. Do you do that? Oh, where's our friend? Oh, he went over that way. We use our point finger. And this works the same thing in our life. We need vision. As a leader, we need a vision. Because the vision that we have in our lives guide us. Our dreams inspire us. Do you have a vision? One time during a high school batch reunion, two old friends met at a party. As they chatted, one of the guys <clears throat> became interested to meet his friend's wife. Turning his head to a group of ladies at a distance, he pointed his wife, Yun. He actually pointed to his wife using his uh, lips. You know, Filipinos tend to use their lips to point to a direction. Either their hands are full or sometimes out of customary habit. Now Joshua has a lesson for, for us. Let me read this text in Joshua chapter 1, verses 10 to 11. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the midst of the camp, and command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourselves, for within three days you are to cross this Jordan, to go and to possess the land. I want you to underline that, that phrase in your Bible, to go in to possess the land. Possess. Possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess it. What land is God giving you to possess? What dream is God giving you to possess? What goals, what dreams has God revealed to you? And as you spend your time with God, you hear His voice telling you, you know, my son, I want you to go this way. I want you to accomplish this big task, this big goal for my kingdom. Possess it. And just like Joshua leading out Israel, the people, through thick and thin, through all the challenges, he leads out. We go this way. You know, as a, as a leader, you must have a vision to lead. Do you know where to take your people? Do you know where God wants your people to be? That is why it is a prerequisite if you are a leader that you know your God very well. If you don't know your God well, how would you know where you should go? Because the only, the only person who knows best where we should go is no other than our loving God in heaven. God is giving that vision to you right now. Possess it. Possess it. As a leader, do you know where you are headed? If where you're headed, your vision for yourself, for your family, for your company, for your institution, for your church, for whatever, whatever organization you are, if your vision for that group is unclear, how do you expect other people to follow you? Do you know what you want? you may not know the how to get there. But what is important is you know the what. Do you know what you want? You want a job? You want a wife? You want a car? You want a ministry? You want what? The how follows after that. But unless you know what you want, how would you even get there? You know, take one step at a time. And God will lead the way. We, are, we had our medical checkup yesterday. 
And after that, we went to the mall to have our lunch. As I was ordering, my four-year-old son yelled with, with confidence, Daddy, I want burger and juice. You know, he, 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 he made his order with such confidence and authority that my son, my four-year-old son, knew what he wants. I know my son likes burger a lot, but he takes out the patty and just eats the bread. I don't know where he learned that, but my son knows what he wants. You know, my wife looked at me and we understood each other. My son knows what he wants. While others say in Filipino, Bahala ka na, daddy. Oh, it's up to you, daddy. And uh, allows other people to make their decisions, make choices for them. For, for them. You know, my son knows what he wants. And you as a Christian, and you as a person should know what you want. If God called you to be a businessman, pursue your vision. A nurse, work hard at it. Any ministries, go for it. Is your vision for your organization clear? Make it clear so that everyone who follows you know where you're headed. What do you want your organization to be? I don't know where you're, you're involved in right now. Are you involved in an outreach group, a discipleship group, a community extension group? Do you enjoy handing out uh, good uh, tracts about... Uh, present issues or perhaps helping those who are in need of food? Are you involved in a Bible study group, an all-around group? What do you want your group to, to, to be known for? Do you aspire to be like Dynamic Teens, an organization led by CNN hero Efren Peña Florida? Pursue your vision with passion. Huh? You pursue your vision with such passion. If your vision for your group is not clear, Again, let me remind you, how do you expect people to join your group? People need to know. Ponder upon this question. What are you doing right now? What is your organization doing right now? Like Joshua, are your directives clear? Then go, cross the Jordan, possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess it. Third is the middle finger. And the, finger, the middle finger reminds me as a leader to have that foresight to coach. Foresight. We all need foresight. Common sense. The ability to see beyond what everyone sees just near us. I don't know if you play chess, but have you ever played chess? Or uh, any other board game? There are times when I just watch from a distance about uh, these two guys playing chess. And as a watcher, I don't know if you have uh, observed that, as a watcher, did you notice that oftentimes you see a good move to make that none of these two players have seen yet? Think about it. Every top athlete and athletic team has a coach. In the world of athletics, nobody performs his way out of needing a coach. Everyone needs a coach, right? In the world of leadership, however, we operate under the misguided assumption that because we are leaders, we don't need to be led. We think we don't need outside input in order to enhance our performance. As a result, we don't maximize our God-given potential to achieve our best. I'm a leader, and I too need someone to guide me text in the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 1 verse 5 in the New International Version let the wise listen. Are you wise? If you are wise, let the wise listen and add to their learning. You, need, you see a leader learns from others and add to their learning and let the discerning are you discerning? Get guidance. We need that. We need people to help us as we make important decisions in our lives. We need foresight. Sometimes we could not see clearly, but there's a friend we can keep in touch with. Talk to him. Share your heart with him. And if he is a man after God's own heart, he usually gives one best advice. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5 is such a good reminder to all of us that we need someone to mentor us. 
we have a tendency as leaders to compare ourselves to others. I do that at times, and that is because of insecurity. Insecurities have no place in the heart of a good leader. But you see, a coach, you call him a coach, a mentor, an advisor, you call, you call him whatever you want, but a coach helps you measure your performance against your strengths instead of against someone else. You know, if you really have a friend who really cares for you and who really wants you to grow and who has known you from the very beginning, he'd be able to tell you honestly if you have been growing in your leadership skills, in your character as a Christian. So find yourself a good mentor. Find yourself a good advisor, a friend, a Christian counselor, or a pastor who can be your mentor, your coach, and share your life with that person. I learned a lot from my mentors, and I, and I continue to consult with them up to now. You know, Facebook is around. Skype is there. Technology is uh, just within reach. And although they are now in, in, uh, residing in uh, a far, far country, I can still keep in touch with them. Those of you who think God speaks to you directly, you better think twice. God appointed different gifts to His church so that we may be wiser with our decisions and actions. Better get a good advisor. Get a good consultant and tutor. Great leaders are great learners. Learn that. Great leaders are great learners. If you are not teachable, you are not coachable. The best leaders in this world are not necessarily the most talented. Let me repeat that. The best leaders in this world are not necessarily the most talented. But those who are willing to listen, submissive to learn from others. Listen to advice, Proverbs 19.20, and accept instruction. And in the end, what's the end result? If you listen to advice and accept instruction, in the end, you will be wise. Ask your mentor, how did I handle the meeting today? How was my speech? How am I leading the team? Don't be afraid to ask. Because if your mentor is really genuine and, re and he really wants you to grow, he will really tell you. Then be a good coach yourself. Be a good coach for the leaders around you. Each officer in my department is being mentored by my associates. You are not too young. You can be a coach to another leader, no matter how young you are. So get a coach, and you will never stop improving. Become a coach and ensure the improvement of those around you. Four, the ring finger, balance to manage. You know, we put the ring on this finger. And this finger reminds us that as a leader, we have talents to manage. The people given us by God have different gifts and skills. Question now is, how do you maximize your potential as a leader? What do you do? Build upon your giftedness and delegate all else. And when you do this, the result is a competent organization that reflects your strengths, not your weaknesses. The Bible has something to tell us in the Acts chapter 6. Verses 2 to 4. Let me read. So the twelve called the whole group of the disciples together and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God, to wait on tables. But carefully select from among you brothers, seven men who are well attested, full of the Spirit, and of wisdom, whom we may put in charge of this necessary task. But we will never devote ourselves but, I'm sorry, but we will devote ourselves, I mean, we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. If you are a preacher and a teacher, devote your gift and your time to that specific task. And nothing else. Of course, from time to time, there, there might be a need. But focus on your major gifts. There is always a tendency for us to uh, do all things by our, ourselves. Why? Because we don't trust other people to be able to do it. And what do you do? You know, what I do is I develop a competent team and help the leaders in your, and uh, help the leaders in my organization, in your organization, discover their leadership competencies and delegate accordingly. What are you really good at? You know, there's a myth. And it's a myth that a good leader has to be good at everything. 
I don't have to be good at everything. I may be good in preaching or teaching, but I may not be good in anything else. That's just okay. You may be good in compassion, in administration, but you may not be good in, say, like singing. That's okay. That's good. The two best kept leadership is the less you do, the more you accomplish. Andy, Andy Stanley shared this in his book. And I, I, I'm reminded about this important principle. The less you do, the more you accomplish. The less you do, the more you enable others to accomplish. Why? Because if you delegate the responsibility to others, they in turn get to become involved, which would have not been possible if you have not trusted them. You, your real value to your organization lay within the context of your giftedness, not in the number of hours you work. So discover your gifts. Try it out. Discover the gifts of the people around you and manage those talents. Lastly, the little finger. The little finger. The little finger reminds me and reminds you about the character that we need to maintain. Our little fingers are small but terrible. It can go places where our thumbs dare not enter. We clean our ears with our little fingers, right? It is small enough and humble enough to do the dirty jobs. And what makes a leader worth following? Character. Character is the will to do what's right even when it's hard. You know, cleaning your ear with your finger is not an easy task for that, for that little finger. The Bible has something to share with us. Proverbs 11.3, The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the crookedness of the treacherous will destroy them. The fact that people choose to follow you is not necessarily an indicator that you deserve to be followed. There is a significant difference between having a following and being worth following. As a leader, are you worth following? Character is who you are when nobody sees you. Let me teach you a prayer I learned from a pastor. He prays like something like this. Lord, give me wisdom to know what is right and the courage to do what's right, even when it's hard. I like that prayer. Lord, give me wisdom to know what is right and the courage to do what's right, even when it is hard. Be connected to God constantly. Our characters are being developed every day. So go ahead. Embrace those five finger leadership principles, essentials. The thumb represents the courage to lead. You need courage to lead as a leader. Go. Two, the point finger reminds us about the vision that we need to have so that we know where to bring our people. The vision guides us where we're going. Three, the middle finger the highest finger reminds us about the foresight we need to have. Foresight to teach other people, to mentor other people, to coach other people. And the ring finger represents the talents, the skills, the gifts, the resources, the people that God has entrusted under our care. And of course, the little, the little finger represents the character that we need to maintain and share them with the people around you. You know, be reminded of these five-finger leadership essentials. Remember that character is important. Share all these principles and pass it on to the next generation leaders. May your life be an encouragement, an inspiration, an opportunity, and hope to the next generation. God bless you, my friend. Bringing hope the world over. Hope Channel.